Here it is then. Meet the first electric car adorned with the prancing horse badge of Ferrari. And first impressions are, it's not what you might expect. For one, it doesn't look very new, and that's of course because it's based on one of the great Ferrari racing cars, the 250 Testarossa. Don't think there'll be many complaints about that, given that it is the most beautiful car that ever existed. The other thing that's quite unusual about it, you don't notice until you get up close. No, I haven't had another growth spurt. What we have here is an electric Ferrari micro car. The fully charged show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's fully charged live Canada. Click the top right of the screen to get your tickets today. So then, ladies and gents, what on earth do we have here today? Well, like I said, first electric Ferrari. Granted, it wasn't built in Maranello, it was built here in Bista by the Little Car Company. This is their third project, the previous two, a little teeny Bugatti and a little teeny Aston Martin. And this is what they do. They make astonishingly accurate, small electric recreations of iconic cars from the past. What it's not, I will just be clear now, is road legal. This is not a L7 category micro car. Don't worry, Microlino, you don't have to go up against Ferrari just yet. It's a toy. It's for getting you from the front door of your mansion to your private helipad or from hole nine to hole 10 on your private golf course. That's really basically what this thing is for. Like all great Ferraris before it, it's absolutely exquisite, very fast, very expensive and a little bit pointless. And just to be very clear, this is an official Ferrari product. They've given their seal of approval for this car. They've provided the paint and the badges and the leather and the pedals. Ferrari have signed off on this, which if you know anything about Ferrari, you'll know is astonishing because this is a company that does not like their brand being mucked about with. This is a company that have sent cease and desist letters to owners who they've disapproved of the color of wrap that they've applied to their car or didn't appreciate the way that their car was depicted in a hip hop music video. They don't like people messing with their brand, but they do like this, which speaks to how exquisitely it's been done. Price, well, yeah, it's 100 grand. Let's not make a big thing out of it. It's, it, it starts at 97,000 euro. That's before any of the extras, and there are extras. These wheels, which are made by the company that did the original Testarossa wheels, those are 10 grand. Yeah, uh, imagine trying to discipline the child who owns one of these. Imagine being the babysitter. Tarquin, stop trying to run your sister over and go to your room. What's he gonna do? He's not gonna do as he's told. He's certainly not going to throw a tantrum. That kid is going to buy the agency that you came from and liquidate it. Now look, I probably look silly right now. I do, I do, of course I do, I'm driving a toy car. But I cannot tell you how special this feels. Looking out across that sculpted bonnet, looking down at this immaculate Ferrari steering wheel, these Ferrari dials, all perfectly identical to those in the original 250 Testarossa. I'll never drive a Le Mans winning Ferrari. This is the closest I'll ever get. And it feels pretty damn close. There are journalists who have driven genuine 250 Testarossas and this, and have given it their seal of approval as far as authenticity, the way it drives, the way it feels. And the attention to detail in here is just staggering. So let's just have a little nosy round thing shall we it's not going to take too long because well there's not a whole lot of car but on the other hand there is an awful lot of detail to talk about this body is hand beaten it takes 300 hours using a hammer to create this perfect recreation of the body of a 250 testarossa staggering it does look quite small for a three-quarter scale car. Uh, ben, the founder, tried to explain this to me in math terms, but basically the cars sort of grow exponentially when you increase their size. So a 75% scale car like this actually only looks like kind of 50 something percent of the mass, if that makes sense. I'm 
confused myself actually let's move on 3.1 meters long 1.2 meters wide very very diddy but impressive amounts of space in there for your feet as i'll show you under here now then here we find these swappable battery packs these are just under two kilowatt hours each the car can take up to three of them for a total of 50 55 miles of range which is quite a lot in a car like this and you can buy extra batteries and then just pull those out and install new ones as and when if you just can't wait for them to charge lovely this particular example by the way has been specced with the paco garo pack that's the uh, the track pack in case the standard little car testarossa is just not exclusive enough for you and one of your pals at the golf club also has one you get the track pack that's how you get the special paint job with the colored nose these period correct motorsport headlights just like the one that raced in Le Mans what else you get a bolt-on roll cage this can be removed you even get this exterior mirror which only the race car had the attention to detail is obsessive and you see that more than anywhere else inside come and have a look at this I'm gonna be very careful very gently sit on the side here oh my goodness okay where to begin well we've got genuine Ferrari leather for the tonneau cover just like the race car we've got the exact steering wheel you'd expect to find on a 1950s ferrari absolutely gorgeous same for the dials and all the electric stuff is kind of buried under analog features so we have these beautiful analog dials in front of us but if you look closely while they appear period correct they're actually talking about regen and battery capacity this is a fun little touch as well they do like to add a few little fun details. Here we have a Manatino, like you'd find on the steering wheel of a modern Ferrari supercar to choose your drive modes. Here it helps us choose between novice, comfort, sport, and race performance mode for the full power experience. But it's also, it's also the key. Okay, I'm gonna get in it now. And that's what I'm sure you've been waiting to see and laugh at. Um, it's not dignified. I'll be honest with you, the car is very impressively spacious given its size, but well, I'm huge and there's no way around that, is there? While I'm doing this, let me just tell you something really interesting to distract you from the indignity. This car doesn't have to adhere to any safety standards at all. It's a non-road legal toy, but the little car company have built it to L7E safety standards, which means that this thing is as safe to drive as a Microlino, a City Transformer, a Carver. They didn't need to do that, but they have, because they felt that they should. And it does beg the question, do you suppose any of the owners ever consider road registering theirs and popping to the pub in them? Could the little car company be planning some road legal contraptions next? Couldn't possibly speculate. Okay, so Manatino on. Drive selector, into drive, dials do a little dance, handbrake, in, and yeah. All I can think as I sit here is what a complete crime it is that this car isn't road legal. Because think about it, seating for two, 50 odd miles of range, swappable batteries, great visibility, L7E crash safety rating? You tell me a better car for the school run. Your kids would be a hero. Now this is what I'm doing right now. This is how most little car owners will use it. They'll just pootle around the grounds of their lovely stately home having a lovely time. Some won't even drive them. They'll just pop them in the corner of a room as a small work of art, which it most definitely is. But maybe just maybe one or two we we'll want to drive them a bit harder, see what they're really capable of. And uh, they won't be disappointed. So what I'm now going to do is go from comfort mode into sport mode, into race mode, and um, head to that racetrack over there. So then, out on track in the Testarossa J with the track pack. This is surely something that absolutely none of the owners are ever going to do. 
And if this thing looked the way it looked, was built the way it was built, but just handled and drove like a toy car, they'd still sell everyone they made. But that's not the way they do things here. So they've ensured it handles. Oh my goodness. It's fast. This track pack version of the Testarossa J gets a power increase up to 14 kilowatts. It also gets a quicker steering rack, adjustable dampers. And the brakes, the brakes are off a Ducati Superbike. You couldn't stop quicker if you drove into a brick wall. <laughs> it's so much fun. By the way, those 14 kilowatts, 19 odd horsepower, and that 50 mile an hour top speed, do not do it justice. Feels a whole lot faster than that. I love these period correct Pirelli tires. I was a bit worried about those. They've got so much sidewall, you can feel them leaning as you go through the corners. Just like in the original car. So what's the broader significance of something like this? Is there one? Is this just yucky, rich guy stuff? Well, it definitely is a little bit. I mean, it is unbelievably expensive. It's worth it, the quality of the work, don't get me wrong. But I do think there's a broader story here. For one, the return of coach building. These guys could not exist without electrification. A low volume company building these exquisite coach built vehicles, hundreds of hours spent hand beating the body panels. You can't do that if you also have to navigate internal combustion engines. Buying batteries and motors off the shelf, it enables these guys to focus on what they are really good at and build it in low volume. I love the idea that electrification could see a, something of a, a coach building renaissance. I love that. But more than anything else, it's just fun. Remember fun? We still could do with a little more of that as far as electric vehicles go. People say that EVs aren't fun to drive. Wrong. Heavy cars aren't fun to drive, and modern cars are heavy. Try driving a quarter ton electric vehicle. Fun. What this is doing, it's preserving car culture. It's ensuring that there are car nerds in the future. Did that sound convincing? Was that a valid excuse to spend the afternoon zooming around a track in an exquisite electric children's car? <laughs> I did my best. Oh, there you go. The Testarossa J. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thanks for watching. <laughs>